Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's get going. This will start out with the defense. Then on this first occasion, when she was in there, was the dog present? Yes, he was. Was he loose in the yard? He is always loose in the yard. You do not keep him tied within the yard? Oh, no. Did you ever let him out of the yard? No, he is always in the back. Do you remember whether the dog played with any of the children, either Mrs. Bold's children or the other children that were there? Oh, yes, because my daughter's friends came over. On the occasion in question, were their children there? No, because it was too early. Children don't come over at that time. But they were over there then, were they not? No, there was nobody there then except my daughter. No other children? No, no other children. Then, did you have any conversation with Mrs. Bold about returning for the clothes? Yes, I told her to be sure and call me and let me know when she came back. And this conversation you had was after the clothes were hung? Yes, that's right. She was starting to go. And did you say anything else at that time? I don't remember. Did she say anything else? That I don't remember. And when she did return, when did you first see her? Well, I had just laid my daughter down for a nap, and I heard the dog barking, so I went out to see what she was barking about, and there stood Mrs. Bold in the back of my yard. Did you see anyone else? Her daughter was with her. Was the daughter in the yard at that time? Well, she was half and half. She was in between the gate and... Was she standing in the gateway? Is that what you mean? Yes. She was just coming through the gate into the yard. Okay, so let's try some practice from our transcript. Looks like we will have the plaintiff and the defense. Questioning. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we start with the plaintiff. Ready? Where did you make this statement? at the hospital. Okay, Mr. Majors was there visiting? Uh-huh. At the same time as you? Yes. Now where was this car usually kept? In Arthur's possession. What time frame are we talking about now? On the day of the accident? Strike that. Where was the car usually kept, say, two weeks before the accident 
before before Mr. Bradford had been in the accident that he was in. He, it was in Arthur's possession, but Arthur was living with Keith at the time, so it must have been at Keith's house. You weren't living with Mr. Bradford at the time after this accident occurred? No. Did you ever contact the police department or any kind of law enforcement agency prior to the time, meaning before the time that this accident occurred, to let them know that you objected or had some, you didn't want Mr. Majors to drive the vehicle? No. In other words, you never reported it stolen? No. Did you ever contact anybody from the Department of Motor Vehicles at any time prior to the time that this accident occurred to inform them that you didn't want to be responsible for any damage that might be done either to or with the car if it was driven by Mr. Majors? No. Had you seen Mr. Majors on the day of this accident before it happened? No. When you spoke with Mr. Bradford and Mr. Majors at the hospital, were there any bad feelings with Mr. Majors driving the vehicle? What did Mr. Bradford say about it. He, he just wanted Keith to keep the car. Just told me I couldn't have the car. So, in other words, maybe I'm reading between the lines here, but when you were at the hospital and when you said in front of Mr. Majors and Mr. Bradford, that you didn't want Mr. Majors driving it because you could be responsible. You, at the same time, actually wanted the vehicle to be given over to you so that you could keep it, uh-huh, in your possession. Right, yes. Excuse me. Oh, gosh. I thought I was going to sneeze. We didn't want that to happen. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. So a nice little break. We'll get back to it now. <clears throat> Hopefully. Here we go. Do you have insurance on this vehicle? Yes. Did you pay the insurance premiums on the vehicle? No. Did Mr. Bradford? Yes. You said that Mr. Bradford and Mr. Majors prior to Mr. Bradford's entrance into the hospital both lived at Mr. Major's house, right? Yes. And the address at Mr. Major's house at that time was Colton. I don't know exactly the address. Do you know what street it was on? It was on Myrtle, I believe. It was very close to where this accident occurred, isn't it? Right, yes. Do you know how far from Mr. Mosley's house it was to where the accident occurred? Approximately half a mile. Half a mile. Half a mile. Uh-huh. After the accident, how did you find out that your vehicle or the vehicle that was in your name 
was involved in this accident, Keith came by and told me. And what did he tell you happened? Just that, you know, he was in an accident and the car was totaled out. Did he also tell you that he had a passenger in the vehicle with him? Uh-huh, yes. And what, who did he say was with him on that day? Kevin, Kevin who? Roberts. And did you know Kevin Roberts prior to the day of this accident? Yeah, not as of, just as an acquaintance. I didn't know him that well. Did you ever know Kevin Roberts? to use cocaine? No. Prior to the day of this accident? No. Was Mr. Majors taken to jail on the day of this accident? From what I understand. But did he tell you he was taken to jail? Yes, he did. Sorry for my, my nose. And that will do it for our Q&A practice. Thank you.